So, this afternoon, I want to do a little update concerning uh, world events, what's happening right now. If you have been paying attention, you know by now that um, <clears throat> Israel apparently launched an attack on a consulate or a building where the Iranian consulate was in Syria. And... <clears throat> killed one of the major generals that were conducting operations or helping to conduct operations by <clears throat> Hamas and Hezbollah against Israel during the um, October the 7th situation. <clears throat> so, in the Daily Express this morning, the CIA warns Iran will attack Israel within 48 hours. Well, it wasn't this morning, it was yesterday. And this was posted at 7 Eastern Time. But as I understand, right about now, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time is where the, sometime where the <clears throat> 48 hours ends. Revenge for consulate attack. U.S. intelligence officials have branded Israel's strike on the U Iranian consulate in Syria as reckless and fears a wider war in the Middle East. Fears a wider war in the Middle East. <coughs> well, you should know by now that a wider war in the Middle East is coming. You should know this. Have you not written Yoel 3? by Charles Bradley. Well, it was updated on Thursday. So, who knows? Oh, it was updated in the afternoon on Thursday. Okay. The CIA has warned Israel that Iran will attack the country in the next 48 hours. It has been reported. Now, does the CIA know what it's talking about? <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. Israel killed two Iranian military commanders with a strike on Tehran's consulate in the Syrian capital Damascus this week. Iran vowed that it would take revenge for the attack, and now foreign media is reporting that U.S. intelligence is fearful of attack on Israel. Tehran <coughs> is said to be planning a combined attack with a rain of drones and missiles fired from its base at strategic locations inside of Israel, according to al Mayadeen. This comes after... U.S. officials raised fears that the Israeli strike could lead to a wider war in the Middle East. Ralph Goff, a former CIA senior official who operated in the Middle East, said Israel's strike was reckless, adding that it would only result in escalation by Iran and its proxies. Blah, blah, blah. Speaking to the New York Times, he added that Israel is trying to hit the Iranian Revolutionary Guard to punish them for ongoing plots to kill or kidnap Israeli Jews around the world. Former U.S. Central Command Chief and retired four-star General Kenneth F. McKenzie warned the attack was a blow for Iran. He also said Iran's options to hit Israel are very, very limited, and the Israelis are not going to back down. Yeah, so there's really not a whole lot that Iran can do. Okay. So, one of the commenters asked, uh, the question is, will res Iran respond in a manner that this escalates the situation or will it climb further up the escalation ladder? Well, let us um, see what the old Ayatollah says. The evil Zionist regime will be punished at the hands of our brave men. We will make them regret this crime and other ones. Doesn't sound very convincing to me. Now... It appears that War News 24-7 is back online, or either that has a new owner. I don't know which, but um, there is an article here somewhere. <sighs> if 
Vladimir Putin on Biden, the great Iran-Iran, Iran-Israel war will commence, at least he hopes, will hit Israeli soil directly. They say that Israel has um, their own war alerts at hospitals and the shelters are going to be open and uh, doctors and nurses license will be suspended so that anyone can whatever, whatever, uh, play doctor or, or be a doctor or patch up wounds. American and Israeli officials have announced that Iran will respond to the bombings of its embassy in Syria with a direct hit on Israeli soil. Israel understands that there will be Iranian response, and since terrorist attacks through Iranian proxies are unsuccessful, Iran will try to strike directly at Israel from its territory, according to Israel's Channel 12. Now, I looked at Israel's Channel 12. I did not see it. I did not see the article. It does not put a link to the article. Senior Israeli officials reportedly received intelligence during the day that indicated that the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps may launch an attack on Israel on Friday, that is today, using medium-range ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and kamikaze drones. And I would say also that um, it's getting a little bit late for it to happen today. In Israel, if you know what I mean. What is it about? Is it about six hours later? Than Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Israel is gradually entering a state of emergency. It is emergency and it's unknown if Iran strikes in the next few hours or whether it will emerge from it. Whatever. <clears throat> So you have all of these, their little statements, and then you have even Ra uh, Rasputin number two, statement by a Dugin under Biden, the great war between Iran and Israel, the statement from his close advisor, Dugin are of interest. He noted, Israel attacked Iran and Syria, this is an act of aggression, now Iran has no choice but to attack Israel. But with all the forces of the resist, with all the forces of the resistance, this war will be started by the Shiites. But at some po point, it cannot be become but a war of all Muslims. That is what he's hoping. But when I read, when I read the scripture, it plainly states that. Nations today that are Christian nations will come down too. So, is anything going to happen? We don't know, but time is running out for Friday, I can tell you that. Now, Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei addresses Israel in Hebrew. Now, <clears throat> I would like to warn you leaders in Iran what happened to the king of Assyria after the northern tribes were taken, and when he tried then to take Yehuda and Jerusalem, King Hezekiah was a king of Yehuda in those days, and he read the statement made by King Sennacherib's representative. And he spoke to the Jews in Jerusalem in Hebrew. Now, this is how they translated it. Now, um, I wonder which is... Uh, 
Let's see. I need to copy this. I can't. So if any of you can understand Hebrew, obviously he did not mention Jehovah. He probably used the Western God or Got. And in so doing, invoking a false idol. But I want to remind everyone of what happened when King Sennacherib's representative spoke to Hezekiah, to the people of Yehuda and Jerusalem in those days, and he committed blasphemy. And because he did this, and because Hezekiah prayed to Jehovah for deliverance and laid out a copy of Sennacherib's representative speech before Jehovah when he was praying and a messenger came and killed the entire invading force of Sennacherib that night. So I'm saying to you folks in Iran, you might want to check the real scripture, not the Quran, but the real scripture, the words of the prophets. Here, I'll help you out. Okay. It's in Second Kings eighteen and nineteen. So put down your Koran, your Koran, whatever you want to call it, and pick up a copy of the Tanakh and read Second Kings eighteen. And 19. Okay. Let's do that. Now, <clears throat> so we read here in the first verse of 2 Kings 18 that in the th third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, uh, the son of Ahaz, king of Yehuda, began to reign. 25 years old was when he began to reign. He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of not the Lord, but Jehovah. According to all that David, his great-great-grandfather did, he removed the high places and broke the graven images and cut down the groves and broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses made. He even broke that up. Because in those days the children of Israel burned incense to it. And they called it Nehushtan. He trusted 
Yehovah Elohim of Israel. So that after him was none like him among all the kings of Yehuda, and not any that were before him. For he clave to Jehovah and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which Jehovah commanded Moshe. And Jehovah was with him, and he prospered wherever he went, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. And he smote the Philistines in Gaza. You Iranians, especially the Ayatollah, you need to listen carefully. And the borders thereof, and the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel. Oh, it was... Oh, yeah, that was when Shalom and Nezer came to against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of the three years, they took it. And in the sixth year of Hezekiah, or Hezekiah, in the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken, and the king of Assyria did carry away Israel into Assyria and put them in Chalach, an area under Syrian control, and in uh, Chabore, a, a river of Assyria, by the river of Gozan, in the cities of the Medes. Because they obeyed not the voice of Jehovah Elohim, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moshe, and the servant of Jehovah, commanded, and would not hear them nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Yehuda and took them. He took them. And the only one that was left was Yehuda. And Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, If I have offended, return, or turn around from putting, from to give set to lift. And the king of Assyria appointed unto king Hezekiah of Yehuda three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Jehovah. That's the first mistake. He should never have done that. And the treasures of the king's house. And at that time, Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of Jehovah and from the pillars where Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, overlaid it and gave it to the king of Assyria. But it's never enough, you see. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabbis Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. Oh, they wanted more! And they went up and came to Jerusalem, and when they came up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, they came out, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and Yoah of the son of Asaph the recorder. Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak now to Hezekiah. Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence and wherein do you trust? You say, You speak, but your words are vain. I have counsel and strength for war. Now in whom do you trust? that you rebelled against me. Now behold, you trust upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on with, if a man leans, it will cut into his hand and pierce it. And this is King Pharaoh of Egypt, uh, the, how he does to everyone that trusts in him. But if you say unto me, we trust in Jehovah Elohim, that's what it says. The high place in which the altars Hezekiah have taken away and has said to Yehuda and Jerusalem, You shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now, therefore, take a pledge to the king of Assyria, and I will deliver you two 
thousand horses if you are able on your part to set riders upon them. So he's providing a dare. He said, I will provide you two thousand horses if you can give them riders. I guess to make it a fair fight. Return the face to one captain of the least of my master's servants and put them against the least, the most useless captain that the king of Assyria has and put your trust in Egypt for chariots for horsemen. Come without Jehovah against this place to destroy it. And then he said, he claims that Jehovah told him to go up against this land to destroy it. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Yoah, unto Rabshakeh, speak, I pray, to your servants in the Syrian language, for we understand that. And talk not us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are in the wall. Because they were scaring the Jews to death with that kind of talk. But it was incredibly vile. It was over-the-top blasphemy. <clears throat> but Rabshakeh said unto them, Has my master sent me to your master, and to you to speak these words? Has he not sent me to men which sit on the wall, that, you, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? And then Rabshakeh stood and cried out with a great voice in the Jews' language, and spoke, saying, Hear the word of the great king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Jehovah, saying, Jehovah will surely deliver us in this city. Uh, deliverance will be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. And on and on and on and on he goes. Okay? But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Do not answer him. Then came uh, uh, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household of Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph, the recorder to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. It came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, he ripped his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went to the house of Jehovah. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household of Shebna the scribe and the elders of the priests, and covered with sackcloth to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, Hezekiah, on this day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is no strength to bring forth. It may be that Jehovah Elohim will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria his master sent to reproach to the living Elohim, not God, you can see right there, not God, but Elohim, to reprove with words which Jehovah Elohim has heard. Lift a prayer for the remnant that are left, so the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus you shall say unto your master, This says Jehovah, not the Lord. Be not afraid of the words which you have heard, for which the servants of the king of Assyria has blasphemed. I will send a, a wind, a breath, a spirit, and he will hear a rumor, and shall return into his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, and for he had heard that he had departed from Lachish, and when he had heard say of Tirkara, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come to fight against you, he sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, you will speak to Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, saying, Let not Elohim in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be del delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the king of Assyria has done in all the lands, destroying them utterly. 
and shall you be delivered? Have the idols of all the Gentile, other Gentiles delivered them which my father has destroyed? And this is what he has done. One of the cardinal sins is to make Jehovah the same as all the other God, all the other idols, including God or Jesus or Jesus. He's saying, where are the children of Eden? Where is Thelazar? Where is the king of Hamath? The king of Arphad? The king of the city of Sepharvim? Of Hena, of Eva, Eva. And then Hezekiah received the letter in the hands of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of Jehovah and spread it before Jehovah. And he prayed before Jehovah and said, Jehovah Elohim of Israel, which dwell between the caravan, you are Elohim, you alone. All the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Jehovah. Extend your ear and hear. Open, Jehovah, eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which sent him reproach to the living Elohim of a truth. Jehovah, the king of Assyria, have destroyed all the Gentiles and their lands, and have cast their idols into the fire, for they were no Elohim at all, but the work of men's hands. Wood and stone, <coughs> just like your Christian Jesus is, and therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, Jehovah Elohim, I beseech you, save us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Jehovah Elohim and you only. And when Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, This is what Jehovah Elohim of Israel, that which you prayed against King Sennacherib, Assyria have heard or to hear. This is the word Jehovah has spoken concerning him. The virgin daughter of Zion despise you and laugh you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at you. Whom have your reproach and blasphemed against? Whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Even the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have reproached Adonai, and have said with the multitude of your chariots, am I come down to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, and unto the forest with his, of his carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, with the sole of my feet I have dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Have you not heard long ago how I did in ancient times, and now I brought it and came to pass, and should, and you're going to lay waste the face city, uh, the fence cities in ruinous heaps. Therefore, the inhabitants were small of power, and they were dismayed and confounded, and they were as the grass of the field, and as the grass herb, as the grass of the root house tops, as the corn blasted before it grew up. I knew your abode, your going in and your coming out, and your rage against me. Because you rage against me and your multitude, your tumult has come up unto my ears, or your big mouth has come up into my ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back the way you came. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year which springs are the same, and in the third year you will sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. And a remnant that is escaped of the house of Yehuda shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of Jehovah of hosts, shall do this. Therefore says Jehovah of hosts concerning the king of Assyria. He shall not come into the city. He will not shoot a single arrow there, nor meet it with a shield, or cast a bank against it. By the way he came, by the same way he shall return, and shall not come into this city, says Jehovah, for I will defend this city to save it for my own namesake, for 
my servant David's sake. And it came to pass in that night that the messenger, that's what it says, of Jehovah, that's what it says, went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when they arose in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So the king Sennacherib of Assyria departed. He went and returned and lived in Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshipping the house of Nisroch, his idol, that Adramelech and Sherezer, his son, smote him with the sword, and they escaped in the land of Armenia. And Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, to the Ayatollah in Iran, I want you to understand one thing. If you read Yoel 3 in the Tanakh, I advise you to do so. You will see in the very first verse of the third chapter that Jehovah is going to bring back Yehuda to Jerusalem. Well, he did. It also says he's going to do it for a reason. To gather all the Gentiles against it for judgment. That includes you, Iran. So, if you, Iran, bother to read the totality of Yoel 3, you will learn of your demise and the demise of all the Gentile nations round about who come against Jerusalem this time. So, it's a word of warning to you. You now have advanced notice. I know you have people that are capable of listening to this video. And it doesn't matter if they hear it or not, the warning is out there. And this warning goes out to every other nation that has ill intent toward the people who live in the land of Israel today, right now, the Jews. Once again, I don't know if we're going to see anything happen tonight, but <clears throat> the outcome has already been spoken of thousands of years ago. The outcome in Yoel 3 cannot be changed. It is 100% guaranteed. 